Today, we are going to talk about something very important, which is safety. Hey guys, Liz from The Nail Hub, and I am so excited to talk about something that is very, very important in any type of service, whether you're doing this at home, whether you're doing this to yourself, whether you're doing this to paid clients, safety is really important. And I wanted to go over some of the basics that you should be implementing during your services to make sure that you prevent any types of infections, allergies, or other injuries that can happen to you inadvertently while you're enjoying all of your lovely nail art. All right, so first I wanted to start with one of the most important assets we all have, which is our eyes. And this is something a lot of people don't think about when they're doing nail care. Um, E-filing specifically, when we've got stuff flying all over the place, but also when we're nipping, we're clipping toenails, we work on things that are gonna fly all over the place. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some basic safety gear that you can use to protect your eyes. We don't want anything getting into our eyes, um, specifically any types of debris, 3D art, you know, things that we're clipping off, but also uh, any of the chemicals that we're working with, rubbing alcohol, acetone, um, you know, our barbicides, our quads, all of that good stuff. We wanna make sure that we're protecting our eyes. So I'm gonna show you just a couple basic examples that you can use for protecting your eyes. These are fake glasses. They are not prescription at all. They're just plastic. And you'll notice that this one has um, crystals on it and this one is just plain black. So having a fake pair of glasses like this is a really great way to protect your, your eyes while you're working. Um, it makes sure that stuff is gonna stay away from your, um, your eyes. It's gonna keep dust from getting in there. And you can definitely tell a difference when you wear a pair of glasses while you're e-filing or while you're working, you will definitely notice debris that gets on the surface of your glasses. And that's all stuff that could have been getting into your eyes. Um, I have had many a time where I have been nipping something like 3D art off of someone's nails and it flings up and you know hits me in the face. So definitely make sure that you are wearing some type of protective eye gear. I really like wearing fake glasses like this because I think they look really cute. Um, so for example, and hopefully I won't get a reflection from my light here, but they do a good job of if I'm working, right? Cause I'm not working like this where stuff's gonna go up inside my glasses. I'm really working like this, looking down at the client's nail like that. So anything that's gonna fly is gonna hit right here on my glasses, okay? So you can have them be cute like this, cute little cat eye ones if you want. You can bling them out if you want to. I've done that on several pairs. And I do keep several pairs around just so I can swap them in and out. Um, I do clean them periodically with Windex or soap and water works great and they're cheap. I mean, I think these were like eight, $9 a pair. Um, and I'll add some links below the video as to some great places that you can get cute fake glasses, okay? Um, so I really, really recommend getting some protective eyewear. And I know that sounds, you know, um, maybe a little bit overkill, especially if you're just saying, oh, I only do my nails at home. I don't need that. But I've actually had more stuff fly into my face while I'm doing my own nails than what I've been doing clients. So eye care is number one. And if you wear prescription glasses, great. You can wear those or definitely make sure you get some kind of protective uh, finish on your lenses so that they won't get scratched from stuff flying around, especially like caviar beads, um, you know, pieces of acrylic. Uh, there's definitely times when chunks of stuff just flies everywhere, okay? All right, so besides our eyes, what else is really important to us when we're working? That is hands. Our hands are really important, obviously, because that's what allows us to do nails in the first place. And also, we want to protect our skin um, from any type of uncured product getting on there, especially chemicals that we're working with. There's even such a thing as using too much scrub, too much lotion. When you're doing pedicure after pedicure after pedicure, or you're using the same types of products on clients over and over again, a lot of times your skin can get worn out. So wearing gloves is really great. Um, I have often gotten asked what kind of gloves to use, and I like nitrile. A lot of people are allergic to latex these days. Um, so I'm gonna show you the ones I get. And again, I'll put the link below the video. So these are black nitrile. I kind of like black. Some people think it's creepy, but I think it's cool. It looks a little bit less, um, you know, medical than white gloves. You can also get pink, purple. I've seen all kinds of colors. 
Um, but you want to look for uh, nitrile gloves. Nitrile gloves are going to be hypoallergenic for people that are allergic to latex, but they're also going to be nice and durable and they're also really stretchy. If you get other types of gloves, um, I've seen uh, I've seen ones that they're kind of like um, like uh, cafeteria gloves, like for people doing uh, food service, and they're really thin and they don't stretch. Uh, you're gonna break through those in three seconds, and I've noticed that they don't hold up on acetone or alcohol that well either. It's very normal for your gloves to get kind of pruney or for the acetone to start to eat the gloves. Unfortunately, latex is the, ba the best type of material for working with acetone and things like that. But like I said, a lot of people are allergic to latex. So if you're working in a salon environment, it's probably a better bet to get some nitrile gloves than to do latex because you're going to always have to ask, you know, are you allergic to latex? And rather than have that whole conversation, I just did nitrile. Okay. Uh, they come in different sizes. Usually gloves come in small through extra, extra large. So depending on your hand size, um, I, I recommend that your gloves be snug like this, where I don't have any gaping or loose material here, but I also don't like them to be super, super skin tight. Um, I know if you were maybe a doctor or a surgeon, you need them to be ridiculously tight to your fingers so that you have that ability to feel through your gloves. But uh, when we're working with nails, I prefer to leave them a little bit looser. So I wear a small, for example, um, but they go up in all kinds of sizes. So depending on your finger length, the width of your palms, um, you, can, you can try that out, okay? The other thing I would recommend when it comes to gloves, some gloves come with a powder inside of the glove. And this is meant to be kind of like deodorant for your hands. It keeps your hands from getting moist on the inside. I don't know about all of you that have tried gloves and maybe you guys can write some comments below this video, but in my experience, whenever I have purchased gloves with powder, it tends to irritate my hands if I wear them for prolonged periods of time. So I am a nail tech where I do like to wear gloves when I'm working. I'll get into when I put gloves on um, a little bit later, uh, but I do like to wear gloves because my hands do get worn out. They get worn out by the, you know, just the, isopropyl alcohol and the acetone and the lotions and the scrubs and and just all that stuff can really take its toll on your skin and I often I often have my own nails done so I like to make sure that my nails are protected as well so I really like wearing gloves um, and I think most clients appreciate the fact that I wear gloves and I have had a couple people ask me you know as a client why are you wearing gloves? Like, what are you protecting yourself from? And a lot of times I tell them, look, you know, I, I like to make sure that my own nails are protected. I use a lot of things on a daily basis. They're only getting scrub and lotion and isopropyl alcohol on them or gel cleanser on them once every, you know, two or three or four or five weeks. For me, if I'm doing six clients a day, that's a lot of exposure to even nice perfumey lotion and stuff. And for me, my skin just, it, it gives up. But the powder I have found also irritates my skin. So I recommend to get gloves without powder. Some of you might disagree, but I really do not like the powder. Um, I find that it really irritates my hands. And so I would rather just have regular nitrile gloves that are a nice kind of, uh, you know, tight feel, but not super, super constricting and it protects my jewelry, it protects my nails, it protects my skin. And also if I want to wipe my brushes on the back of my hand, like we talked about in my brush video, when it comes to um, protecting our skin and making sure that we're not getting allergies, I can definitely get product on my gloves and I'm not going to be getting that uncured product on my skin. So I'm preventing any type of overexposure that might happen from the products that I work with, okay? So eyes absolutely protect eyes. Hands, definitely protect hands and skin. That's super, super important. Um, and the last thing that is really important when it comes to protecting our own safety when doing nails is our lungs, right? With gel specifically, because I am a gel, um, a gel professional and I, I, am, I really like working with gel, gel actually creates a very, very fine dust, much finer than acrylic. And so that dust can actually become airborne as we're working and so we wanna protect our lungs. That's really, really important. Now, you have a couple options. You can wear a face mask if you want to. Um, for those of you that don't wanna get into dust vacuums, you can get a face mask. The only thing I'm gonna add about face masks, and this is something to take into consideration, um, there are lots of cute handmade face masks on the market that are just made out of fabric. 
Uh, there's also the typical kind that are like dental masks, um, which I don't have any here, but I do have something that's similar. So let me show you kind of what I'm talking about. So this doesn't have straps on it, but you guys have probably seen like these kind of masks, right? That are like dental masks and then they bend, you know, to, to fit your nose like this. And then they have straps that go around your ears, right? We've all seen these at the dentist. Okay. The issue with these is that a lot of people, they will wear them for multiple appointments and these are actually not graded. Uh, and what I mean graded is like not cheese graded, but like graded to be able to prevent uh, the really, really fine gel dust from coming through, okay? So if you're wearing a face mask, that's great. You're preventing most of the stuff, but this is also not going to be 110% dust proof. And if you're reusing these for the whole day, you're wearing the same mask, this is definitely not doing the trick. You're gonna have stuff coming through the mask. You're gonna be breathing it in because the dust is gonna get stuck on here. It's gonna get embedded in the fibers and you are gonna be getting some of that permeating through the mask, okay? So face masks are a great place to start. But the other thing about face masks, even if this worked perfectly, even if I was able to wear a face mask that filtered out every single thing that's in the air while I was working, I'm still getting dust on my hair, my face, my arms, my shirt. You know, if I'm wearing a, a lower cut shirt, I could get it on my chest. And with that product, especially if you're using something like acrylic or, or the, you know, the gel is still polymerizing and the acrylic is still polymerizing, which it does, it continues to polymerize even after curing or even after setting up, um, you're getting that basically still polymerizing product on your skin and that can also cause allergies. So a lot of nail techs have told me, I wear gloves, I wear face mask, I wear eye protection, and I've still gotten contact dermatitis from working day in, day out with nail products. It's probably because all that dust that you're working with, whether it's gel or acrylic, is going up in the air, it's not going and breathing, you're not breathing it in, but you are getting it all over your skin and you're wearing that all day, every day, until you go home and shower, okay? So that's something to think about when it comes to just using a face mask. Now, what's my personal opinion on how I like to protect my lungs? I like to use a dust vacuum, and there are lots of different styles, but I'm gonna show you a couple different models, um, ones that I recommend and ones that I don't recommend. Of course, I will put links below this video for everything that I can recommend to you guys. Um, and dust vacuums typically are not something that is professional only. So any of you who are DIYers, everything I'm talking about today in this video is something very, very important for you to invest in, even if you're doing your own nails at home and you're just dabbling, okay? I really want you guys to protect yourselves because this is something where our passion can turn into a complete nightmare and it's totally inadvertent most of the time. But once you have an allergy to nail products, it's very difficult to get rid of that allergy. It doesn't mean you're gonna get allergic to everything, but once you have that allergy, it's gonna be fighting you every step of the way. And if you are a client watching these videos just for your own information, all of the stuff I'm talking about today is something that you should be looking for in the salon that you go to to get your nails done. You want to make sure that your nail tech is not only conscious about their own health, but a dust vacuum system is really important to your health as well. I've been to many a nail salon where the person is decked out with face masks, you know, glasses, gloves, but there's dust flying everywhere and I'm sitting there going like, okay, I'm the client, how come I'm getting covered in dust? It gets in my purse, it gets on my phone, it gets on my hands, it gets everywhere. And so having that dust vacuum system is really gonna make sure that the dust gets sucked down, especially that fine dust that you can potentially breathe in. And it's also gonna control the dust that's flying around on our bodies. So that is really, really important to making sure that our hobby and our passion for nails and our love of nail art and all of that fun stuff that we all adore doesn't become something that causes us lifelong problems, okay? So, talked about eyes, we talked about um, skin, now I wanna talk about um, some dust vacuums and some different models. All right, um, I'm going to quickly show you one version here, okay? This is a, this is a variation of um, a very popular uh, e-file um, dust vacuum system. And this one's pretty cool. So it basically comes with these disposable filters like this. So when it's on, um, and I don't really want to turn these on because they make so much noise, but I'll do this so you can hear kind of the, the noise volume. Okay, so when we turn this on, I'm just gonna turn on low. You'll see that it kind of sucks this, this filter down. 
So that's low. I'm going to turn up high so you can hear. Okay. So I can file over this. And then when I'm done, I can just wad this all up and throw away the dust, which is really cool. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, okay, um, and I have been using it for a while, I think it's a really great idea, but the only thing I don't like is there's obviously going to be dust that doesn't fall directly on this filter. And so there can be dust that goes around the outside. And with my other styles of dust vacuums, I'm usually able to like sweep it into the center to clean up everything on the machine and sweep it into the filter. But because the filter is on top of the machine, I can't sweep it in without it getting up underneath. And you don't want the stuff to go in here because it, any dust that goes inside the fan is gonna get blown out the sides. So you'll see right here, there's a vent here on this side and there's a vent here on this side. So the dust, basically the air gets sucked down into the fan and then gets exhausted out through the sides. So that's why you want to keep dust away from the fan because it's just going to blow it out onto your table, which is better than your face, but you can see how this works. So I like the idea of this. I like that they're disposable. They're, it's, it's a very inexpensive model. I'm going to put the link to this down below my video, um, but you know, it does have some pros and cons to it. Okay, so that's one version right there. Let's talk about another one that I'm sure you have seen all over the place. Okay, so here's another one. This is one that you've probably seen um, on lots of different websites. And I'm going to be very careful with this because it does have dust in the bag. Okay, so this model, same idea. It's cushiony. It's got kind of this angle for the person to be able to relax their hands. If I was the client, my hand would be up over this fan while I'm working and I'm the nail tech working. Um, the fan sucks the dust in and then there is like a cloth bag. So there is a cloth bag that traps all of the dust. But seriously, if I like tap this thing, dust just starts to come out of it. This is not a very good way to make sure that the dust is not getting into your breathing area. Because again, this is just like a, it's almost like a shoe bag. Um, it is not HEPA grade. So any dust, and I can even see it, it's like come watch, I'll rub this. You can see the dust coming through onto my gloves. So this is gonna trap big particle dust, but it's not going to prevent fine particle dust from getting into your lungs. And you can even see here, like right here, the off switch, how much dust comes out of it while I'm e-filing, okay? So again, this is a very inexpensive version. It's better than nothing, but if you're gonna buy a dust vacuum, I would not spend money on this, okay? No offense to the people that make them, but they're just not ideal for, um, for gel. Uh, they really, really do not do a good job of trapping all of that fine particle dust, okay? All right. Um, there is also tabletop ones, and I don't have one installed on my table because since I film a lot, I don't wanna have something permanently fixed into my table. However, this is a model that you can actually install into your table. So if you've ever seen people that have like um, their table actually has the fan built into it. So basically instead of my table just being plain here, it would have the fan built into the table and it would be nice and flush with the rest of my table. So this is one like that that you can do. You can uh, install it into your actual table. It actually hangs just on upside like on the underside of your table um, and it's it's installed so that it's perfectly flush with your table. So this one, what it does is once you have it all installed, this piece sits on top. So this is like where my table would sit like this and this whole brick would be underneath. This is the fan. Um, so this would be underneath my table and then through the hole, this sits on top and then my table would be perfectly flush with this so I can pull this out. And then it comes with these filters that you can put in here and it also comes with a protective grate that slides over the top so you can basically slide this over the top and it's gonna be a little bit difficult because i've got plastic on it okay so this slides completely over the top of the filter so while you're working you're able to work on a surface that isn't going to be you know touching your gel with fuzz from the the filter but it does do a good job of trapping all of that fine particle dust and because the filter is underneath, 
I can easily sweep the dust into the filter when I'm done working. Because when we work, you know, this is gonna do a good job of trapping most of the dust, but there is gonna be some that gets around the table on my hands, all that, so I wanna be able to dust that off into the filter, okay? Um, the disadvantage with these are that they're more expensive because you have to um, buy a more expensive machine because it's kind of more of a custom design. Um, and uh, you also have to buy these replacement filters, which one filter will probably last you, it depends on how many services you do, um, but one filter will probably last you a few, uh, like maybe a handful of weeks, maybe like three weeks um, if you're working full time. And in between clients, you're gonna have the dust in here. You can bang out the filter into the trash can and get all of that uh, debris and dust that's on the top and then put it back in and use the same filter more than once. So that's a nice thing is you can reuse the filter, but they do get clogged up just like the filters we use in our home air conditioning systems. They do get clogged up with debris and with dust. So these need to be replaced. So this is definitely a higher end unit. Um, and again, I will put the, the link for this down below if you guys are interested in this one, but these are all great versions of dust, um, dust vacuums, okay? Um, last but not least, I'm hesitant to show you guys this because um, it is no longer available. However, if you can find something like this, I think this is really cool. Okay, so the challenge with this one, and I understand why, um, you know, why the person who was selling these decided not to do it anymore. But the cool thing about this is it slips right over my e-file, okay? So it's got a hole in here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, so that hole in there um, actually goes up into this hose and this whole hose is attached to a vacuum cleaner. So I'm able to um, suck up the dust right while I'm e-filing. This is best for people, obviously, who e-file. If you don't e-file, then this is not going to be worth it for you. But while you're e-filing, the dust gets sucked right up into there, um, and it's really nice. And it does, um, it does a very good job. It basically has this, this membrane hose, um, which is a little bit delicate. If you really bend it hard, you can crack that membrane in between, but it's a very flexible, long hose. And then on the other end, it has this part that goes into um, a vacuum cleaner unit. So typically you get like a little portable vacuum cleaner. You need to have HEPA grade filters again, because we want to be able to, um, we want to be able to protect ourselves from that really, really fine dust. And so HEPA grade filters are the type of filters that are going to be able to prevent that dust from getting into your airspace. Um, and it also prevents that dust from getting into the, the motor for the vacuum, which can kill your vacuum cleaner, okay? So advantage of this is it sucks up the dust directly from your e-file, which is really, really nice. Um, disadvantages are it's really loud because you have to have a vacuum cleaner going. It's, um, it's louder than, um, than you know one of the tabletop units. And the other disadvantage is that um, you have to be more diligent about using this one. It works great. I've used the same unit for many years now, but you have to be diligent about it because the vacuum can get overloaded with dust. And if you burn out your vacuum, then you've got to buy a new vacuum. Um, and so that's something to think about, okay? So these are all just different, different types of ways to manage the dust in your work area. And you will see me using them as we get into the artificial enhancements because I'm gonna be teaching you guys e-filing basics all the way through advanced artificial enhancements. We're gonna be using dust control as you know one of our main things because as you get into e-filing, with e-filing comes dust, right? Um, yes, it comes with hand filing as well, but e-filing is really, because it's such a high speed and it's spinning, it really does bring all of that dust up into your, your area. Now, I've also seen some, I mean, I've seen it all. I have seen people using humidifiers that blow you know, the, the moist air up and trap the dust and it makes it fall. I've seen people working with a humidifier. I've even seen people where they just put a fan on one side of their table and blow all the dust to the other side. Um, I've seen the, the ones that hang up above that suck all the dust up. 
My personal opinion on all of that, and again, this is my personal opinion. Um, you can disagree with me if you want to, but with the humidifier, you're adding moisture in your workspace, which can affect all of the stuff that you work with. It's also, I think, not exactly super sanitary to have like wet dust falling all over the place. It's just gonna be kind of yucky. I don't know, that's my personal opinion. I've seen it, it does work, but I just think it's kind of yucky to be working in a very humid, damp environment, even if that's the way you wanna control your dust. Um, and it can affect your th the things you're working with. Um, with the fan that just blows the dust across your table, you're literally coating the whole side of your room, potentially your, your other furniture, or if you have a coworker that you sit next to in a salon, you're gonna blow all that dust all over your stuff and everyone else's stuff. So yeah, it might be getting the dust out of your airspace, but it's just gonna coat everything with a big layer of dust, and that's a pain in the butt to, to clean up. So I don't really like the fan idea. Um, also the units that hang up above you, I also don't like it because that means that the dust has to travel up past your mouth to get up to the unit. So you're basically like breathing it in as it goes past you. I don't like that either. Um, there's lots of different units out there and there's also really, really expensive salon grade units, um, that are big, big side, you know, side table units that are meant to be in a place where people are working with acrylic all the time. It helps to purify the air as well as extract dust. So there is everything from a $35, like the little, like this one. I mean, these are typically like 35 bucks, okay? So there's really, really, really cheap units all the way up to $5,000 plus um, for dust extraction. And it just depends on the setting that you're working with. But I wanted to at least show you guys that this is something really important that you need to consider no matter whether you're doing your own nails at home or you are in a salon environment. Obviously, you're, if you're at home, you know, maybe something like this is going to do the trick just because it's cheap and easy. But I would recommend going one step up from that so you're getting something that actually is trapping the dust instead of blowing it all over the place. Um, and that way you're gonna be sure that you're protecting your airspace. But if you're working in a salon environment, you're gonna need to spend a little bit more. You're gonna need to invest a little bit more because you're gonna need something that can actually keep up with you with back-to-back -back services. And so obviously it might be a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna get your money out of it because you work more. And that's all something that we need to, um, to invest in when it comes to our health, right? And because we're gonna be trapping all of that dust with these dust vacuums and all the different units that I showed you, not only are you protecting your own air as the person who's working on the nails, but you're also protecting your client, which is really important, okay? So eyes, skin, lungs, super important to protect. Now we're gonna talk about the last part, which is sanitation um, when it comes to our tools that we're using. Extremely important, and I've had so many people you know, bring up, oh, well, I use this to clean my tools, or I use that to clean my tools, or what about this? I was told that you could use this to clean your tools. Um, and I talked about this a little bit during our nail file uh, video when it comes to our file sanitizable. Um, and I also talked about it a little bit during our cuticle prep uh, video with the nippers and the cuticle scissors, because it's very important to clean your tools um, for a litany of reasons. Okay, so if you go to a nail school, Hopefully this is something that you learned because most state boards, when it comes to licensing nail technicians, their number one priority is to train people how to prevent the spread of disease. And that is what this sanitation stuff is all about. Um, I also want to go over the differences between the different terminology when we're talking about disinfection, sanitation, and sterilization, okay? so. Let's start with the most basic protocol, which is disinfection. Disinfection means we are eliminating as much of the bacteria and viruses and other things that could potentially hurt ourselves or our clients on our tools, on our workspace, everything. Um, but disinfection is not necessarily sterilization. Sterilization means there is absolutely nothing left on there. It's a higher grade of sanitization. So disinfection is what 99.9% .9 of us are gonna be doing, and that's great. Disinfection of your tools and of your work area is exactly what you need to be doing, and that is going to prevent 
99% of the problems that could possibly arise. And we're gonna talk about the actual problems that can arise um, as we move forward. I've got some ideas on things that I wanna show you as far as nail problems, some health things that you might come across when you're working on people's nails, how to identify them, and what do you do when you have those things come across your table. Okay, so let's start first with um, a very, very basic tutorial on disinfecting our tools. And I've got some tools here. Now, I've got some nippers and I have some cuticle pushers, which are very typical of what we're gonna be using. And we can also do this with our bits. Okay, so I'll just put one bit here. All right, so how do we clean our tools? Well, first off, you need to wash everything with hot, soapy water, and you need to scrub the dickens out of your tools. We want to do that so that we get any dust and debris off of our tools. So if I zoom in here, I want to see if I can find a dirty one that I haven't used. Okay. Can you see there's like some skin or whatever right here, the little white stuff? Okay. It might not be skin. It might be fake nail. It might be, I don't know what it could be. Um, let me see if I have some other dirty ones here. So I, was trying to, I was trying to save some for you guys for this video. Let's see. That's as good as it's gonna get, sorry, I'm a clean freak, so I don't have a lot of dirty things to show you. Um, but we wanna make sure that we get all of the debris out of our nippers, and also after we're done pushing back cuticles, there might be debris on our cuticle pusher, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're cleaning all of our tools really well. The, the problem with putting dirty tools in your sanitizer, if you have sanitizer, um, like I'm going to talk about barbicide in a second. A lot of people think, oh, that's going to do the trick. All I need to do is just toss my tools in there. Well, that, that dust and debris and skin can actually prevent your solution, your quat solution from working properly. So step one is you are going to, just like before you put dishes in the dish, well, maybe more so than dishes in the dishwasher. You're going to take a scrub brush. Plastic is great for for um, cuticle pushers, nippers, stuff like that. Just take a manicure brush like this. You're gonna use nice hot soapy water and you are going to scrub all the little pieces out of your, your tools, okay? Make sure that they're nice and clean, that there's no debris, especially like on, on these parts, the scrapers. Make sure you clean everything really well and the handles and everything because as we work, they can get really grody. So hot soapy water, you're gonna rinse everything and then once everything has been rinsed with water, then you can put it into your quat solution, okay? Um, with bits, and again, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more when we get into e-filing, but I wanted to show you. With bits, you're going to want to use a wire brush, okay, and this kind of looks like a barbecue brush, but it's actually much softer. Um, you're going to really get in the grooves, and I twist the bit around as I'm getting in there, so again, I will zoom in for you all. Okay, so if you can see this bit, this is a cross-cut diamond bit, um, but I'll show you one that I was using yesterday. Cuticle bit. Okay, so the wire brush is going to really get in between those particles. It doesn't dull your bit very much doing this. Um, it's actually, this brush is intended for use with e-file bits. So it's not gonna hurt your bits, but it is gonna get in between those little nooks and crannies and it's gonna get all of that dust, debris, skin, everything out of your bits. And again, you're gonna do this with hot soapy water, rinse them really well with water and don't, um, you know, don't leave any soap residue on them and then you're gonna put them in your quat solution, okay? So let's talk about quats for a second. Again, this is something that if you went to nail school, you should have learned the basics of this, but I've also heard people going, you know, I don't know what this is. Okay. So you are going to want to use an EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant. Okay. So barbicide is a very, very well known one, but there are lots of different uh, versions out there. Um, there's leucocide, there's, um, Excel from Canada, I think everyone in Canada uses Excel. Um, there, there's lots of different versions 
And again, I will leave the link below this video um, about EPA registered disinfectants and how you know whether or not it's EPA registered and why um, it makes a difference, okay? So this disinfectant is going to kill um, viruses, funguses, pseudomonas, which are basically what people refer to erroneously as nail mold. There's no such thing as nail mold, but if you've ever seen green nails, and again, I'll show you this in an upcoming video about nail problems, um, pseudomona bacteria can, is probably one of the most common things that I've seen when it comes to uh, issues that happen with nails. And also it's a germicide, okay? So you can use this diluted to even clean your nail table, but I primarily use this stuff to clean all of my bits. You definitely wanna make sure you're wearing gloves when you're using this because it is hazardous to uh, your skin um, and it can be corrosive. It's just meant to kill all the gross stuff that's on our tools. So on here, there are directions for use. So you wanna use two ounces of barbicide and 32 ounces of water, okay? Um, so it says barbicide is for use in hospitals, healthcare facilities, tanning facilities, and in beauty salons, barber shops, and hairstyling establishments, all right? So um, you want to submerge your, um, your, your tools to be in this solution, the two ounces and 32 ounces of water. You wanna leave your tools in there for 10 minutes. And so all the directions on how to use this are in here but it's gonna vary depending on which sanitizer you use or which disinfectant you use, okay? So you want to make sure you're reading the instructions for your sanitizer. Um, and uh, you'll see on here, this is really, really important. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this. This is why you wanna use something like this, especially if you're working in a salon. And I apologize, it looks like it was double printed on here. It kills HIV, AIDS virus, HBV, HCV on pre-cleaned environmental surfaces and objects previously soiled with blood and body fluids. So if you had anybody that you might've come into contact with that had HIV, that their blood was on your nippers or something like that, once you wash uh, and clean those and you put your tools inside this disinfectant, it will kill all of that, okay? It'll also kill pseudomonas bacteria. It'll kill all kinds of stuff. And there's also, there's also a higher grade barbicide. It's called Barbicide Plus, and it also kills tuberculosis um, and some other stuff. So regular barbicide is the most basic one. And again, it's gonna vary by your country where you are, but barbicide is great. I've used it consistently since I became a nail technician. Um, and you can get nice small bottles like this. Um, and this is not something for professionals only. Um, anybody can buy a barbicide and you can get it pretty much anywhere. I will put the link below the video as to where I buy it from. Um, but barbicide is great and you can just buy a small 16 ounce bottle because you dilute this with water, even a bottle this size will last you forever, okay? All right, so, so why can't you use rubbing alcohol to do this? Well, rubbing alcohol is great for killing surface bacteria um, and you know, that's why we use it when we, we you know, made our gel cleanser, um, but it does not kill all of the other stuff that you could potentially come into contact with. So we wanna make sure that we are actually fully disinfecting our tools. So please do not tell me that you are using vodka or you're using isopropyl alcohol or you're using any types of you know, concocted things I understand that maybe you didn't get the right education to begin with, and I'm not blaming you, but now that you have the information that you need, please do your part in preventing the spread of disease because when we're talking about trimming skin, working on areas that we can actually break into the bloodstream, we wanna make sure that we're preventing any spread of disease between people. We wanna protect ourselves and we also wanna protect our clients, okay? And even if you do your own nails at home, you should be cleaning your tools regularly because you can actually have dirty tools sitting in a drawer that start to grow bacteria or other things on them, and you can even infect yourself with your own tools. So just because you're a DIYer doesn't mean you don't need to clean your tools. Everyone should clean their tools. Um, and clients, I have had clients in the salon before that used to come to me and they used to bring their own tools, and they often would say, well, I've had bad experiences at other salons, I'm not sure if their tools are clean, so now I bring my own. The problem with tool, the clients bringing their own tools is that oftentimes clients don't clean their own tools either. They're using the same tools between all the salon visits. They're not cleaning them in between. They're just leaving them in a pouch. Um, and oftentimes those pouches are airtight. So it's growing bacteria. It's growing all kinds of things. So 
What you should do is look for a salon that actually does clean their tools and ask them about it. Ask them about their disinfection procedures for their tools. And if they're not able to answer you like that, then you know that they're not doing it the right way. Okay. Um, the last way that you can actually choose if you're a salon owner, if you're a, a nail technician to clean your tools is using an autoclave. An autoclave uses heat, pressure, and steam to actually sterilize the tools. I actually find that an autoclave is very beneficial for a salon because you're able to clean multiple tools at the same time and you're able to fully sterilize them without having to constantly buy uh, liquid disinfectant. So an autoclave, it is a bigger investment. They're often upwards of $1,000. Um, however, if you're working in a big salon, autoclaves are a great option for cleaning all of your metal implements and your bits. Okay. Um, so if you're interested in autoclaves, you can do that. The autoclave pouches, again, this is a word of, of uh, caution to everyone out there. Um, autoclave pouches, a lot of salons do use them to store their tools inside that have been cleaned, but that doesn't mean that they're actually using an autoclave. So check the indicator on the actual pouches if you're concerned about it. If a pouch has been used in an autoclave, there should be a little indicator on the pouch somewhere that shows you that it has actually been sterilized. So oftentimes the pouches are blue and it turns brown or something on the corner in this little dot section, it'll turn brown. And that's how you know that the pouch has actually been through the sterilization process and that all of those tools inside have been sterilized as well, okay? But the same washing with soap and water applies to everything. It doesn't matter whether you're using an autoclave, it doesn't matter whether you're using disin uh, disinfectant, you need to be scrubbing your tools, bits, everything with hot soapy water and rinsing them before you put them in your autoclave or before you put them in your disinfectant because skin and all of that stuff that's on our tools or could be on our tools can actually get baked onto the tools and it's gonna prevent you from actually sterilizing or disinfecting your tools, okay? I know that's a lot of information, but that's really important. Last but not least, I wanted to show you something that I really like using. I like using a ultrasonic cleaner for my tools. So I put my, uh, my quad solution in here and it has a little basket and then I can put all of my tools in my ultrasonic cleaner. I turn it on and I also turn on a 10 minute timer and I just like it because I feel like it really helps to get the disinfectant solution in all of the nitty gritty areas in my tools. That ultrasonic movement really helps to shake everything and get it very, very clean. So I like to use this. Um, and again, I will put the link below my video um, as to this exact unit that I use. But this is a great thing and it holds a whole bunch of different bits, um, nippers, uh, cuticle pushers, and I can also put my manicure brushes in my quant solution as well to, to disinfect those. All right, guys, I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more about the importance of safety when it comes to working with nails. Again, it's not something that has to be scary, but you definitely want to be responsible when you're doing your own nails or someone else's. There's a lot of things that can be easily prevented, and it's just a shame to hear about those stories that we have all heard nightmare stories about fingers getting amputated and you know people getting diseases from their nail salons it's so easy to prevent it if we all do our part okay and even if you're working on yourself or friends at home i really encourage you to take this seriously protect yourself as you're working and protect your friends and family um, from any type of things that could impact their health. These are really, really important things and it allows us to enjoy nails without having to worry about all of the negative possible side effects, okay? All right, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be in touch with another video next week. And as always, please feel free to leave any comments, questions, suggestions below these videos. I really, really enjoy hearing from all of you. I will make sure I list all of the links to everything I've shown you today below this video in the products used section. So please be sure to check out the details below my video and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye.